Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go into uh, use Python to implement uh, Black Shoals and Cox Ruffs Rubenstein. I'm using uh, the GitHub uh, that is uh, developed here by Yu Chen and Lu, and I'm going to set up the her project again uh, using her format completely without changing anything. So. The idea here would be to implement in the Python environment in Jupyter uh, Notebook uh, using Python code, uh, Black Scholes, um, uh, Cox Ross Rubenstein, and Jar Jaro Rudd binomial trees, and also implement implied volatility. Okay, so uh, in this initial piece of code, it's basically uh, transferring code from here into directly into uh, the Jupyter Notebook. So to open up the Jupyter, launch the Jupyter um, Notebook, I use Anaconda Navigator and uh, basically um, once, so I'm going to copy, so initially I'm going to copy uh, the code here as I go through and then I'll just transfer that code over to Jupyter uh, Notebook. So I'm opening up the Jupyter Notebook that's hosted here in the Chrome browser. And I'm just going to say, well, I'm going to direct the project. Right, so I'm going to go to my OneDrive uh, here. And then I have some Python, I have a Python folder and I'm going to locate, uh, create a, a new folder, perhaps a new folder. And so it's untitled folder one. I'll edit that later. Um, and I want to say, so I'd better go in there and then new Python tree. Okay. So I just paste in the first snippet of code. And to run that, I can hit the control, sorry, the shift and return. Okay. And that prompts me then to go back in and get the second tranche of code here. Okay. And I'll copy, edit, copy. Right. And then come back here, uh, paste. Right. And so on. So just to note, um, the, if you're trying to uh, replicate then this implementation and um, have a look for uh, Yu Chen Amber Lu in GitHub and you find the code there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy each of these snippets of code and put them into the Jupyter uh, notebook and I'll just pause for a moment and then I'll execute the code once I've transferred over and we'll just verify that the results obtained here uh, can be obtained. Okay, so I'm going to pause and transfer everything over. Okay, so I've transferred some of the code over and uh, basically to execute the code, uh, all we need is to take, just uh, go into each of the frames uh, individually, uh, hit shift return, shift return, shift return, shift return, shift return and then we have a section here for inputting in uh, the data so uh, shift return and we're now prompted to put in the stock price and I'll say 100 so I'll enter a value of 100 enter the value for the strike price is 100 so I'll enter that the uh, months and days uh, will put it to, uh, let's take the month as being um, 04, April, the day is 07, so I should put uh, hyphenated, uh, put 07 for the day and then for the year uh, 2019 it returns so that's today 
and then what is the continuously compounding risk rate so i'll enter this percentage of five percent what's the volatility 20. okay and so we've basically our raw data incorporated in to expiration date okay so i'll run this again actually because uh, expiration date okay i want to put it it should have been 2020 so i'll come back here and enter re-enter the data okay 100 uh, strike price 100 uh, again i'm going to take today's date so the month is uh, 04 it's the april uh, the 7th of april and we're going to say the expiration is in exactly one year's time, so 2020. 2020. And then enter again, and then put the interest rate is 5%, the volatility is 20%. Then I go back to Amber's code. This is the code from uh, Amber and We've got to the point where the data has been inputted in and then we just want the frame to appear with that data. So I'll just copy and go back in and I'll just enter, paste. Okay, and we'll shift and enter and the data that we have then, the inputs for the stock price 100, the strike price is 100, time to maturity 1 year, risk free rate 5%, volatility is 20. Then go back again to uh, where we took the code from, Amber's code. We want to calculate the call and the put and get output for delta gamma vega theta rho. So I just, for the Greeks, and I'll paste in uh, the Python code and again hit shift and return and the value I know the value for these parameters using these parameters the value for a European call should be 1045 the delta looks approximately correct uh, the put looks correct uh, so these values are in fact the true values then we go back into um, Amber's code again again and we will implement implied volatility um, so as an important um, very often um, we're looking for implied volatility when we price uh, black shoals um, black shoals calls and puts okay so we'll say shift enter okay do we want uh, the implied volatility of a call or a put, we'll say a put. I'll go with a call, perhaps. Okay, and shift, just hit return. What's the price of the option? We could do 10.45, um, because that's the result that we have here. So 10, 10, 0, 4, 5, 0, 5, 8, 4. Um, and then we come back to our to Amber's code, right? And to calculate, okay. So let's take this and copy and go back into uh, the project again, right? And paste. Okay, and hit sh shift enter. And we can see here with a price of 1045 for a call option, then the implied volatility is equal to uh, 20, 20% 20 014. So very, very close, in fact, to uh, the true value. Okay, so 1045 here is what we're looking for now the okay so it's it's clear here that the, the code is working properly now what i'm going to do here is just give this project a name and i'll say uh, 
uh, I better be careful. It's I want to make sure that the detail is correct. So it's uh, I'm going to say amber blue code, right? Just save it as that. So um, later on uh, I'll be able to so amber blue code. for black shoals and implied volatility, right? Implied volatility. Okay, and we'll just rename and save. Okay, so if we close this project down now, okay, so uh, make sure I save and close down and then go back into, if I want to reopen the project again, Okay, uh, to run the project, uh, we just take each of these lines, these frames, and shift return, 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 and it's prompting me to enter new data. So, um, okay, I will put in again 100, 100, uh, I put a year to be consistent with before it's um, month seven so zero seven hyphen uh, zero four so it's April 7th and in one year's time 2020 okay and five percent percentage uh, volatility 20 hit return and um, shift I get the same values appearing uh, and shift I get the same values and implied volatility it's prompting me do I want to put a call I'm gonna go with a put this time and uh, what is the option price and the option price 557 okay so I'll just copy this copy and paste right enter and then to estimate the implied volatility okay we're getting 20 again 014 why because it was the put option um, uh, and we had a price of 557 so we can alter a little bit we can alter a little bit or change the data set a little bit here so if I come back here to um, where we input the data in I could do shift enter value of the stock this time I'll put as 90 exercise 100 the uh, date zero four seventh twenty twenty so that's again exactly one year's time uh, the interest rate five percent volatility twenty uh, now if I hit uh, shift and return I have an input a stock price of ninety exercise of one hundred so the values are a little bit different I've changed from one hundred to ninety. The value of the call should be much less than 1045 so if I hit shift enter okay the value of the call looks consistent with values I've seen before the value of the put also looks consistent so um, and uh, we can go again and we can do we want to put or a call I want uh, this time we're going to go with the call and what's the price? I'll take the price from here, right? For the call, copy, and then paste that value in, and hit return. And then when I shift and return, the value I get again should be twenty percent also. Okay, and it is so I have the correct result again using these parameters, change parameters.